All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our session on the 2021 Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks and how they connect to our Equity and Inclusion Organization Assessment. Uh, we only have an hour today, so we're hoping to get started um, and we'll have more participants joining us as we get the program going. My name is Marie Subu. I'm the Director of Research and Data Initiatives for Veritas and Partnerships, Equity and Inclusion. And I'm joined today by Dina Sargarin to present on this topic, and we will have some time for questions and discussion at the end of the session. So I just want to cover a few housekeeping details before we jump into the agenda. Um, firstly, we are in Room Central, so we are all available to be on video together. Um, if you would please keep yourself muted throughout the presentation so that we can uh, keep the uh, noise and background noise to a minimum, that would be great. Um, please post any questions that come up in the chat. Uh, we have built in time at the end of each section of the presentation to um, cover questions for a few minutes. And then, of course, at the end of the session, we will try to capture any um, last minute questions that we may have. So please post those in the chat and we will make sure to get to them. And then lastly, we have built in time for some small group discussion uh, at the end of the session today. So you will have a chance to reflect and discuss on, on the topic we're presenting and have a chance to connect with each other as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump over to our agenda quickly so that we can kind of talk through what to expect for our hour together. Um, first, Tim is going to review an overview of the 2021 Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks model. Um, then we will talk about how this DBEID model connects to our equity and inclusion organization assessment. Lastly, we will break into our um, small group for a little bit of discussion, and then we'll come back for some closing remarks at the end of the session. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Dina to kick us off. Thank you, Marcy, and welcome everyone to our session today. And I am just uh, to reminder, Gina Chevrine, Managing Vice President at uh, GCP and in the Equity and Inclusion Division with Marcy. And I'm going to go through the GDEIB uh, in general to provide an overview and talk just a bit about what is different in 2021. But I thought I'd start with a bit of background about GCP if you're not familiar. Greater Cleveland Partnership is the largest chamber of commerce in the country. We have close to 13,000 members, uh, all the way from a small business, all the way up to our very large headquartered businesses here in Greater Cleveland. Our division specifically is uh, the work that we do is to close racial disparities in jobs, income, and wealth. We do that in a number of different ways, number of different programs that we have, one of those being the equity and inclusion assessment. Marcy, next slide. So I'd like to spend some time going over the global diversity, equity, and inclusion benchmarks. Um, these were established uh, in the mid 90s and uh, with the response to the fact that diversity, equity and inclusion has become its own worldwide practice and it's basically its own industry uh, and that it's critical to all organizations. Um, much like other industries, there needs to be a discipline and some benchmarks in place. And so the Center for Global Inclusion created these benchmarks for organizations to use for a number of different things, to really dive into what are the practices they're using, what aren't they using, what kind of measurements and goals can they set, and how can they really move to creating that diverse and inclusive culture within their organization. Next slide. So, Going to the evolution of the GDEIB, as I said, this started back in the 1990s and I wanted to show you this slide to tell you that this isn't a new uh, tool. This tool has been around for uh, decades now and been used around the world. And it started um, obviously back then and has evolved over particularly the last 15 years or so. Uh, it started with the authors and the owners of the GDIB at that time, Global Diversity Inclusion Benchmarks, uh, they gathered 47 expert panelists from around the world to create these benchmarks. And as you can see over the years, about every three to five years, they uh, 
go through a review process and update them based on what's happening in the industry. And so most recently, there was an update in 2021, and I had the privilege of being on the panel to help review the standards and update them to what's happening in our world today. Next slide. So first I thought I'd define what is a benchmark because that, that term is used in a number of different ways. But in this case, it's an organizational standard of performance, usually stated as an end result or an outcome. And this really helps people and organizations achieve high quality results. So I think it's important to keep that in mind as we go through the assessment and look at all the benchmarks that this really is something that organizations can use to help them achieve high quality diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. And next slide. So uses of the benchmarks in your organization, as I mentioned, there's lots of reasons why uh, it's important to use standards. We really like this particular tool because we believe it's uh, comprehensive and covers almost all, if not all facets of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it allows organizations to really assess where they're at, to engage their employees in the process of that assessment. They can determine both short and long-term goals. And this is important when you look at what the business goals are for the organization and how to tie those business goals to the diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. The benchmarks and our assessment help organizations measure their progress year over year. Um, it also helps, and, and we've found this even in GCP, to hire external consultants if that's something that you're looking for. If you take in the assessment and use the standards, this can help the consultant understand better where your organization is at and where you want to move toward. And um, it's a, a gift to organizations. This is a, a tool that is free to anyone and uh, it is tailored to uh, the entire world of, and those consultants and DEI practitioners who work in different countries. And they wanted to create an open, open source tool to try to standardize some of the work that happens in the DEI industry. Next slide. So I think this is also an important slide to put up. Um, DEI in general is not a quick fix. You know, this, this is organizational culture change and it requires that level of attention if you're going to really embed inclusion within your organization. And that's similar with using the benchmark tool. This isn't something to go through and just do a check mark. This is really diving deep into the culture of your organization. So if you're looking for that quick fix, this is not the tool for you, um, but we know that many, many GCP members are not looking for that quick fix. They really have come to us for tools that can help move forward their DEI efforts. Next slide. So I wanna go through the model. I think it's important to understand the foundation of the model um, that the authors created because it was done very intentionally. So there's four different groupings and underneath each of those groupings are categories. And as you can see, it goes everything from the foundation of a DEI program or initiative. And that talks about the vision, the leadership, the structure of your DEI initiative. And then we know how important it is to look at your internal practices around attracting and retaining your employees. There's also an importance put on the external piece of a DEI initiative, listening to and serving your community and how that happens through the products and services that you offer, your marketing, how you're doing your procurement and sourcing. And then that middle piece is the bridging group. And that's trying to align all of those pieces together, measure your progress, learn from it and create sustainability of your DEI initiative. Next slide. So the uh, categories underneath each of those groupings 
align with our assessment. And so you can see that there are 15 categories in total. And underneath each of those, they're listed out. I'm not gonna go through them on this particular slide. We'll go through each of them in subsequent slides. Um, so I'll ask for that next, next slide, right. So that first group, the foundation group, has three different um, categories under that to really drive the strategy. Developing a strong rationale for DEI vision, mission, and strategy that aligns the organizational goals. And this I mentioned before, the importance of aligning your DEI strategy with your business strategy. They shouldn't be separate. They should be um, in lockstep with each other to really move forward your organization so it can be most successful. We also want to make sure that leaders are held accountable. And this is something that's very important, particularly as we uh, see organizations make statements in the community about their commitment. If that's the case, then how are we holding our leaders accountable for what they're saying to make sure that the messages that they put out really is what's happening within that organization? And it's also important, it dives deep into some benchmarks about what resources are being uh, put in place to support DEI initiatives and what does that structure look like? Next slide. And then we go into that internal group and we have attract and retain people. And there are four categories underneath this internal group. And I won't go through all of them in detail, but it is strongly focused on how are you looking for new employees? Where are you looking for employees? What does your recruitment process look like? We hear a lot of times that um, GCP members will say, you know, I want to create a diverse workforce, but I can't find any people of color to fill this role, or I can't find any women to fill this particular role. Well, sometimes it is a pipeline issue, but oftentimes we find that it is a recruitment issue and so there's benchmarks within the tool that say here's some some of the best practices that you might want to employ to try to um, increase who you're attracting and recruiting to your uh, organization and so it goes down even further into once you have folks in your organization what are you doing to help advance them in their careers what do your job descriptions look like? Are they written so that they can um, bring in a diverse candidate pool? And then we know that it's important to have, once your employees are in place, a flexible work environment so that everybody can succeed. Next slide. This third group is the bridging group, as I mentioned. Uh, and this is aligning and connecting all of the other other pieces in place and making sure that you're assessing and measuring and we have our assessment and we strongly encourage organizations to use that as their assessment uh, and measurement tool. You wanna make sure that you're clearly communicating both internally and externally uh, your DEI initiative and making sure that you're connecting um, your DEI initiative to sustainability. And that's one that um, tends to come up with a lot of questions, but a lot of our larger corporations have um, uh, different departments where they bring the two together to make sure that they're aligned. Next slide. And the last one being that external group. We know that there's research that shows that diver greater diversity creates more innovation. And this is important when businesses or organizations are developing new, uh, new products or services to make sure that there's a diverse group at the table so that those products and services are developed in a way that can attract new clients or even you know, gain greater market share for a particular product. And it's also important that when um, marketing strategies are put in place that they're aligned with the DEI strategy. So if you are marketing to a particular segment, what is your messaging? What does your website look like? What do your ad campaigns look like? So taking into account all of those pieces as well. Next slide. 
So I wanted to do uh, a few slides on the tool itself for the Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks. Obviously, global is in the name. Uh, and that is to make sure that these standards apply around the world. The panel of 100 or so experts that were put together to revise the tool are made up of professionals throughout the world. Um, and so that was, uh, for me, an, an exciting opportunity to work with practitioners in different countries to get their perspective on DEI. And so it does have that uh, bent to it. This tool is not just limited to multinational or large corporations. We encourage uh, small and mid-market organizations to use the tool as well. And this is not specific to any one country, culture, or size of organization. Next slide. And here are some changes. Uh, there are many changes from 2016 to this year, but a few that we're highlighting. Uh, it had been the GDIB, Global Diversity Inclusion Benchmarks. And this year, there was quite a bit of conversation uh, and deliberation about adding equity because that's become such an important uh, change in the language of um, the industry. And so equity has been built into all of the standards. Also separated out recruitment as its own category. So this had been recruitment and advancement as one category, they separated those two out because the understanding that that's an incredibly important piece and there are best practices that need to be pulled out within each recruitment and advancement. There was a lot of conversation about um, what is typically in this uh, country called supplier diversity, uh, but since it's a global tool that was changed to uh, responsible sourcing and still many of the best practices that many of the supplier diversity efforts in this country use, but then there's also some uh, incorporation of what's happening around the world uh, and different than what we might do here. We also added a few more pieces that are a little bit bold, more bold in their statements, rather than kind of coming around side and trying to make a point getting more to the point and saying, no, this is something that our organization needs to do. Next slide. So that's a quick over, overview of all of the uh, tool itself. And it looks like there's a question. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and read it out to you, Gina. Um, so the question is, what sparked the motivation to change the previous DEIB model, and how will these changes further improve DEI efforts amongst organizations who participate in an assessment like this? Yeah, good question. So every few years, every three to five years, the authors of the tool uh, bring together the uh, group of experts to review it and see, is it still relevant? for what's happening in our society. Are there big changes that have happened in the industry that need to be reflected in this tool? Um, you know, one of the big things that was talked about uh, in some of our sessions when uh, revising it was both um, the impact that uh, COVID has had and the disparities that we saw through COVID, the racial disparities, and then also with the murder of George Floyd and the aftermath of that last year, uh, putting into place some of those bold comments more than what had been in the past. So it's really looking at what is happening uh, in the industry and wanting to keep up with those best practices. And so the plan for the um, authors is to bring together a group every several years to reassess. Thank you, we had one more question. Um, do you recommend using this tool for a more comprehensive look at DEI efforts within your organization? Absolutely. It's um, for our team, it's one of the first things that we recommend that organizations do. We'll get calls from GCP members saying, well, where do I start? And so we suggest that the assessment is used for that purpose to go through and get a view of what's happening, what are the practices that you have in place already. Uh, let's take a look at our business strategy and decide what we might want to put in place 
and set a strategy for the next year, the next three years, the next five years of how to implement and further refine your DEI strategies. So it is something that can be used across departments within an organization and really allow for that overall look at what you're doing. Great, so I don't see any additional questions. Um, I will go ahead and get started with the next piece of the presentation and then we'll have some time for questions after that. So please feel free to keep answering questions in the chat as they come up and we will have more time to address them. So we've covered the Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks model and now I want to talk a little bit about our DCP Equity and Inclusion Assessment which uses the GDEIB model um, to assess best practices in our region. Um, and I know we have a variety of participants on the call, some of you who have engaged with our assessment for many years, some of you who are probably brand new to the tool and may not know much about it. Um, so I wanted to give an overview of the tool and then talk a little bit about how this uh, newly released uh, GDEIB benchmark will be incorporated into our UCP assessment. Um, so through our assessment, we have been collecting data on the status of diversity and inclusion efforts of companies in our region uh, for the past two decades. Uh, and we collect this data in a couple of different ways. So the first being data around demographics. So we're asking organizations to um, provide us with their employees and leadership by race and gender. Um, and this is both senior leadership and board leadership for those that that applies to. Um, we also have questions specific for industries who are structured a little bit differently and collect their employee data a little bit differently, and you can see those laid out here on the slide. Um, and then we also ask for companies to provide their um, spend with minority-owned businesses, not only in our region, but nationally, um, so that we're able to kind of see where that percentage lies for the region in terms of spend with minority-owned businesses versus uh, total spend with other vendors. So that's kind of the, the numbers piece, the data piece. On the other side of the tool, we use the Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmark to assess best practices. So what are companies doing in this area to increase equity and inclusion within their uh, organization? Uh, and we've seen the model on the previous slide, and it's shown here again um, to align with those 15 categories of best practice. Companies who participate in our assessment do receive follow-up, and I wanted to briefly explain you know, what happens after you submit your assessment. Uh, the first being that as soon as you submit your organization assessment, your organization can save your answers and also receive your immediate uh, best practice results. Um, and those results are showing you how you're scoring both by category and overall as a whole. Um, and I'll explain it in more detail a little bit later. Secondly, companies receive an individual scorecard so they're able to see, you know, in a confidential manner, their results on the diversity piece as well as the best practice piece, both benchmarked with the aggregate as a whole. So how did the whole region, you know, answer these questions and perform? And how did their industry specifically answer? So they're able to benchmark against both of those variables as well. Um, and then we also provide a full aggregate analysis for the region as a whole. And that is a report that is available on our website. Our report from last year is still available if you're interested. And I will have that link to our site at the end of the presentation. Um, and then lastly, we make a connection to all of our other ENI uh, equity and inclusion division resources. So the first being our best practice library. This is where we collect research toolkits, best practices around diversity, equity, and inclusion um, on a free publicly available site. Um, it is set up to be categorized along with those best practice categories. So for a company who may uh, see that they're not scoring as highly as they want to in recruitment or uh, leadership development, they may go straight into the best practice library into that section and find resources for that area. Secondly, we uh, connect to our other division programming outside of the assessment. Uh, we have a lot going on in our division uh, from webinars, quarterly professional groups for diversity professionals and procurement professionals who are working to hire diversity. We host an annual inclusion conference. Um, we have programming specific to minority business growth. So all of those other resources that we provide as a division, we make the connection to as well. Um, and then lastly, something that we've implemented within the past year is that participants who submit an assessment we're also given the option to sign up for office hours with our team. Um, so those are 30 minute calls with a member of our team 
where you can discuss a topic specific to your organization you might be interested in. It might just be that you want to review your results and your scorecard and help you know, gain some understanding around that. Um, so we provide that time to companies who are participating so that we can engage with them and help them on their next steps of their journey. I wanted to cover a few of the frequently asked questions. Um, we get a lot about the assessment. I'm sure there are more and feel free to pop them in the chat if they come up. Uh, the assessment is confidential. Any results that we release publicly uh, is reported in the aggregate and we do have a level of anonymity to make sure that it is not identifiable. Um, the assessment does uh, take about 30 minutes to complete if you have the data in front of you. Um, but again, that all depends on your preferred method of completion. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in the next slide a little more deeply. Um, of course, in our area, we have a lot of companies who are multinational, maybe they're global and they have a location here in the Northeast, Northeast Ohio area. Um, and we're asking only for data for the Northeast Ohio region. Um, so these are a 17 county area that we have defined in the pool. Um, and so for organizations who have a much broader reach, we're only looking for data for our region specifically. Um, you do not need to complete the assessment in one sitting. Uh, your progress is always saved as you go and you can leave and re-enter at a later date. Um, you can also share the link and password within your organization so that uh, you can kind of tag team it and I'll explain that again in the next slide. Uh, what if you accidentally submit too soon? That's okay, it happens quite frequently. You can always get in touch with me um, to access your submission and make changes if you need it. And then lastly, can you print or save your answers? Yes, of course, after you submit your assessment, you do have the option to save that as a PDF um, along with your best practice results as well. So how should an organization fill out our assessment? Um, in my experience, there are a few different approaches. The first being kind of the point person approach. This might be one person who is going to different departments to collect that data, but they're going to be the person who brings it all together enters the data into the tool and then submits for your organization. There's also the you know, shareable link approach. Um, because the link and password uh, can be shared within your organization, you may prefer to you know, enter, maybe those employee numbers yourself, but you need to go to procurement to get these fire diversity data. You can just send along that link and password and they can enter it. Um, I will just note this does take some internal coordination. So, um, it helps to make sure you know who's responsible for ultimately submitting the final assessment. And then lastly, good old pen and paper. Some people still prefer to work from uh, the PDF, which is fine. Um, on our welcome page, as soon as you log in, you have the option to download the questions in PDF form. That way you could collect everything on paper. You could share them across your organization as well, um, and then ultimately enter and submit it electronically. So now that we have kind of you know, that, that vision, that overview of our organization assessment, how does it tie into the 2021 uh, Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks and how will it change our assessment moving forward? Um, so formerly the GBIB for the past five years has been uh, 14 categories long. Uh, as Gina explained, now it is 15 categories, so there is one additional category. Um, this year, the best practice, or going forward, the best practice categories uh, will be explicitly organized by level. Uh, and I will show you and explain what that means in a minute. Scoring remains the same. It is still weighted by level. And that is from levels of proactive to best practice, which I'll show you in the next slide. And then lastly, um, you may be wondering, you know, when will these changes be taking place? The assessment's open. It's been open uh, for most of the year now. Um, these changes to our assessment will be implemented later this month. Uh, so for those of you who have already started or already completed your assessment this year, you don't have to do anything um, you're taken care of. You don't have to complete a whole nother assessment. We are just rolling out these changes in coordination with the GBEIB, um, and they will be moved into the 2022 assessment as well. So um, these changes are really relevant to those of you who may not be familiar with the tool yet and be interested in participating this year um, because we will be releasing them later this month. So I wanted to explain the five levels of progress. So within each best practice category, like recruitment or advancement and retention or responsible sourcing, there are levels from inactive to best practice. And each best practice uh, item is uh, categorized by level. Um, so as you can see here, level one is, you know, no DEI work has begun, it's inactive in the organization. Level two is reactive, kind of that compliance mindset. 
level three being proactive, there is a clear awareness of the value of DEI. You're maybe starting to implement some systems and practices and what's required. Progressive um, is happening systemically. You're showing improved results. And then lastly, demonstrating best practices. So it's exemplary, um, you know, that global best practice standard. So we will be showing these explicitly in the tool and assessment tool moving forward. Um, so I just wanted to give you kind of a visual of what this will look like. Um, so as you will see, uh, this is an example category. So this is category two, which is leadership and accountability. In the assessment, you will see these laid out by level. Um, so in this example, we have level two. As reactive, leaders are generally unfamiliar or uncomfortable with DEI. Although leaders accept some responsibility, the focus is mainly on compliance with regulations and so on. Um, through level three, which is proactive, and those are laid out here under level three. And then lastly, we have our level four progressive items in leadership and accountability category and the level five in best practice. I didn't want to go through and read all of them um, because that is a lot of text on the screen, but I just wanted to give a visual example of how the assessment tool will look different um, and kind of explain that a little more deeply because we are going to be taking all of these changes into account um, for our assessment and many of you who have seen the same tool year over year um, it's going to look different but not very different we just wanted to um, stay as true as we could to the GDEIB tool and the model um, by making these levels explicit and by including all of these levels in a tool um, but we're still keeping the ultimate goal of, you know, having this as a tool for organizations to take with them to use forward to build out their DE&I strategy and programming. Um, we will have our scoring system uh, as well. Obviously, that score will be different than it has been in the past because we will have more categories and more items um, to, to be included in that. Um, but for the most part, the only difference that you will see and that will be noticeable will just be visually how it looks and how it's laid out and that there are a couple more questions um, involved. So I wanted to point that out and kind of give a visual example for some context. So I'm gonna pause here and go back to the chat for some questions. Please feel free to um, keep adding them as I open it up. So I see here, uh, Grace has asked who in my organization has the ability to fill out the assessment. Um, so anyone can fill out the assessment in our experience. Um, it may be your uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion lead if you have one. Uh, they may be the point person on uh, filling this out or collecting the data. It may also be someone in HR, the organizational level. Um, it could also be leadership. We have a lot of small companies who participate and it's the CEO or the you know, executive leader. Um, so it's a variety of people and as I kind of showed in previous slides, um, it's really up to the organization on which method they prefer. If they prefer to have that point person who's responsible for gathering the information, that's great. If you prefer to share it across the organization, that's great too. Um, everyone has the opportunity to provide input here and data here. Um, so there are multiple ways that you can go about it. I see um, another question. It looks like some great comments too. If I receive my score after filling out the assessment and it's low, what are the next steps I need to take in order to improve my score? Great question. Um, the scores are really just a guiding point for your organization to kind of level set, understand where you are, and then see which areas there might be opportunity in to move forward. Um, so if it is low, you know, that's not to say you've done a bad job or you scored poorly or anything like that. That's to show you where those areas of opportunity might be. And for some companies, they may not be relevant. So in an area like products and services, that might not be you know, widely uh, acknowledged or accepted by all companies because for some, it just doesn't make sense. They don't have a product or service that they're providing that it makes sense to um, build out practices in that way. And that's totally fine. Um, that may not be a benchmark that you're reaching for. It may be in other areas like leadership or sourcing or recruitment or those other things that we talked about. Um, so those next steps, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a lot that built out in our programming, whether it's um, accessing best practices and resources and toolkits, whether it's accessing a consultant to come in um, to work within your organization to do that deeper dive, whether it's tapping into our programming for our professionals group, our conference, our research sharing, our cohort learning. Um, we have all of those steps laid out for you and we're happy to help walk you through some of that. 
but ultimately the internal strategy of your organization is, is unique to your organization. Um, I see a few others. Uh, if none of the benchmarks within any category are applicable to my organization, am I still forced to choose the answer to proceed? No, you're not. Um, if it's not applicable, that's totally fine. You can go right on to the next category, um, which may be applicable. You do not have to uh, answer those questions if they don't apply to you. Um, let's see here. I see some good comments, so I don't want to uh, take away from that. And I don't see any other specific questions at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next portion of our time together. Um, we wanted to give the opportunity for all of us to have a chance to kind of chat in smaller groups. Um, so we have here some of those new categories pulled out. This we what we're calling renewed categories in the 2021 GDEIB. As Gina mentioned, recruitment has been pulled out to be a standalone category um, in addition to advancement and retention. So these categories have really been flushed out and built upon based on where they were in 2016. Um, and that's really exciting and something that we wanted to pull out for discussion today, since we know these are obviously two areas of, of significant interest for organizations looking to build in their DEI strategy. And then lastly, um, as our former supplier diversity category has now been reframed as responsible sourcing, um, it has brought in that piece around ethical sourcing, whether that's fair trade or sustainability or ethical behavior, as opposed to just looking at diversity by you know, category, whether that's minority or women owned or whatever that may be. So we wanted to um, provide some opportunity to discuss these three new categories and also reflect on uh, the presentation and the content shared thus far. So I'm going to break us into some small groups and myself and my colleagues will be helping to guide those discussions um, as we move forward on the Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Benchmarks. Uh, that can be accessed at the Center for Global Inclusion.org. Uh, for more information on our Equity and Inclusion Assessment um, and how to participate, please visit our site at gcpartnership.com slash assessment. Um, we do have an event survey to gather your feedback linked in the chat. So if you could just take a moment to open that up and fill that out before you go eat your lunch or finish out your day, um, we greatly appreciate that. And then lastly, for any additional questions or follow-up, please feel free to reach out to myself or Gina. Our emails are included here as well. Um, and you will be receiving a recording and the slides after the session um, as well. So hopefully uh, that will help you as you uh, move on to use either of these tools. So thank you very much. I will go ahead and close us out. Great to see you all and have a wonderful holiday weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a great day.